Jet on the A mic. Jet better go in. Yo, what up? This is Secret House. You already know. I'm your boy Dong Dong Never Die. And we're joined by Grand uh, Grand Maestro uh, Hanabi over here. And yeah, friend of the show. Hopefully more frequent uh, Secret House resident Deza is in the house today. Uh, he's also joined us for the previous review of the uh, the new Throne record. Um, and he's he's been an invaluable part of the Secret House family. So yeah, get to know if you don't already. I'm just a dude um, just trying to learn from these guys. So, a, a, goes, um, so let's run it. And yeah, today we're going to be talking about the ninth album from Chicago-based MC Lupe Fiasco. The album is called Samurai. Uh, Samurai. I don't remember how many tracks or how long it is. I was supposed to pull uh, that out before. Nine songs. Eight songs, eight songs 30 thirty-one minutes. minutes. Um, and uh, released on Lupe's own uh, label, First and Fifteenth. Um, Produced yeah. by soundtrack. Produced by soundtrack, uh, as as most of his works are, and um, yeah, we've reviewed Lupe before on the channel. We reviewed his previous effort, Drill Music in Zion. Uh, I believe it made great. my top ten albums of the year great list that album. year. That You're right, right. Yeah. and Naomi off that album also probably mm -hmm. made my top ten songs of the year yep. list. Uh, and yeah, we that since we reviewed life. Lupe before, we won't go too deep into how we know Lupe. Like everybody knows everybody Lupe. knows Lupe. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I would describe myself as a fan of his work. I, I fell off for some time circa the controversy with Atlantic and, and the kind of... Is that lasers? Lasers, yeah, lasers, food and liquor too. Like, you know, that was people kind of saw as a, as a fall off in quality of his records. Uh, then he put out Tetsuo in Youth. I kind of came back on board and then Drogas Light, I believe, was the first of that. Yeah. Uh, duology of albums and, and yeah uh, but I, I would say I'm a fan of his work he's someone that I've been listening to since I was a child I had a different I had a different um, relationship with his music I didn't mm. care for his early work um, almost at all you don't like food and liquor at all well oh, it, yeah, you have to remember I was yeah, like yeah, I'm, yeah. I was like an independent underground abstract avant-garde experimental rap motherfucker hey. and yeah. and like I, th I thought like okay this is some cool backpacker crossover fandom type of rap for the mainstream it sounds just fine to me but I never went out of my way to really check that stuff out and then some of his earlier work was clearly aping a song concept from an artist who I, I know I knew personally and, and appreciated it <laughs> And so a lot of us online were just like, well, that's kind of fucking whack that he did that. But more recently, I've seen him give that artist praise um, discussing work. So um, I, I didn't really start appreciating Lupe's work until after he left the kind of mainstream industry aspect of it with Tetsuo and Youth is where I became a, a huge fan. And actually, I, I think that album is still amazing and perhaps still my favorite of all of his work. It's and really I have appreciated album. his work. Uh, the run since he's, then. he's been on since then has been has been really solid. I, yeah. I didn't love Drogos light but i could appreciate you was trying to do something a bit different yeah. with that drogas wave is very good drill music in zion is excellent drill music and in zion. Like, now I, we're on on samurai what about you Desa? How, how do you know what's your him? relationship to lupe um uh, to be honest with you guys probably touch the sky off kanye west yeah, that that's where i first heard him yeah. and then kind of dives into food and liquor i fell in love with that album i was in high school at the time so you know stuff like kick push um what, what are the other songs off of it uh Kick push. Uh, oh, you would have been in elementary school when this came out, no, right? I, I listened to it later. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you yeah, went yeah. to it. Yeah, for sure. I'm forgetting the other song titles off of the Food and Liquor. But the whole, I, I ran the whole album and uh, I just yeah, kind of. Daydream really, was on there. Daydreaming, like, yeah. yeah, yeah, as well. Um, the one that goes like, I don't know why. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, you know, you, you know Lupe, if you're watching yeah. this, like you're probably a fan of his work or, yeah, or yeah. You're, you're familiar at least with who he is. Obviously, yeah. Lupe's occupied a very interesting space in the hip-hop yeah. world for mm. for a long time now uh because you know obviously his kind of breakout to the world was a feature on a kanye west song yeah. and for a while you know he had some some genuine hits you know obviously kick push was was a big hit for him superstar off the yeah. second album was a big hit for him um and he's kind of also occupied that place where he's like critically successful and and widely respected for his rapping ability uh and then he kind of fell out of the public purview for a while yeah. and then every now and then especially with the rise of kendrick lamar yeah. like people 
pop up and make comparisons sure. and, and sort of liken the two of them. Be, because of his earlier career and where he's moved artistically, I think he's right on that cusp of like mainstream recognition, but also largely respected by like the independent underground type of cast. Yeah, exactly. Also, the, how vocal he is about some of the ethics and and just uh, levels of, of talent in, in hip hop music. It, he does support a lot of the, like he said, one of his favorite MCs is Aesop Rock. Yep. And it's extremely unusual that you have like a person as prominent as as Lupe Fiasco giving love to Aesop Rock or to Soul or to you know a variety of these independent cats who they, they also collaborated like a year or two ago right yeah, two years ago Lupe with, and Ace with the uh, skateboard project yeah, skateboard yeah. we recorded I still have that video with the res- oh yeah yes, we got into Spade a, we got, got <laughs> really mad and <laughs> got into a fight with Spade Ooh, on yeah. that one oh, really? El Spade yeah. left uh, he, he left the house on that one oh, wow. <laughs> but um, yeah but we just didn't release it because I thought yeah we don't need to show you guys our yeah. fucking dirty laundry but no hey, uh, Lupe is Lupe is uh, actually incredible and and uh, yeah um, before we get into it yeah do any of you guys remember like 2012 2013 oh 2012 2013 when like Lupe had that whole like North Korea thing on Twitter no. no he just locked off his Twitter account and made it into like a oh private yeah country. I remember hearing yeah yeah I remember because because <laughs> I, I that was when I unfollowed him because it was just kind of this constant like every time like Lupe just getting into fights with every single person who replied to his tweets and, and stuff like that until eventually he was like you know fuck this I'm locking everything down um, mm. I, I remember when it happened but yeah I, I did not take yeah. part that's kind of when I fell off as a fan as well I was kind of just like oh this is frustrating yeah. I remember being on the outside of that and wishing that I followed him. But anyways, that's just a small tidbit. We, should, we don't want to talk I've about never, social media. We don't want to talk about Twitter. I've never really clocked in too much to to his career. Like like even the the beef he had with, uh, you know, they were doing the podcast, him and yeah. Ro- uh, Royce. I always want to say Hoist. Hoist you know, Gracie the 5'9". Hoist yeah, yeah, the 5'9". That's nine. a Gracie shout yeah, on yeah. this record. Yeah, true that. Yeah. yeah. Um, a Shamrock for Sh- Gracie. Trying to pin, it down, pin yeah. down the Grace like Shamrock. Yeah, but... Um, no, uh, I, I I've never really cared too much about him. Like the the more social media stuff, I usually am just like somebody's delivering it to me. Like um, some people in our Discord and some people um, in our Patreon have asked us to discuss his online hip hop history or rap rap class, and I have no real intention of of, of doing that at all. But yeah, like I, I don't I don't know like even the details of the Atlantic deal. Like I was outside of all that. Like uh, yeah. I like I like. Like um, high art outside of the industry, Lupe, and I don't necessarily like to follow people's social media Which presence. Which ties very nicely into today's album discussion uh, because you know Samurai and 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 its predecessors um, are certainly high art outside of the industry, Lupe. Um, yep. And I, I think to say that I think it's fair to say that although it's not my personal favorite, I think it is some of his best work so far. Uh, so, uh, I'm gonna just hand over for a second. Okay, no, we're good. Um, this so fucking yeah. computer, I'm sorry. Uh, no, 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 it, it some technical issues, it's all good. Uh, but this album, uh, is loosely conceptually, uh, based around the life and works of Amy Winehouse, uh, yeah. British jazz singer who sadly passed away at the age of 27 in, I believe, 20. 12 2013 i was um, london around that time from from london i mean yeah you know that was i i also have like a very kind of personal you know i i, I generally try not to develop parasocial relationships or any kind of uh personal attachment to celebrities and things like that but you know amy was like working class very deeply talented person who was from London and represented London. And I can absolutely understand why she was such an alluring figure to Lupe, because I think there are, you know, certain parallels, you know, these are both artists who obviously accomplished quite a lot of mainstream success at a, at a young age within the music industry, very, very talented people, you know, with like a sort of natural gift and, and, and a panache for what they do. Um, and also kind of like weird outsiders and yet, widely loved and lauded by the mainstream i would even go so far as to say that like adele is the kendrick to lupe uh you know the, the, the kendrick to to lupe's amy okay oh, right that's um, an interesting that's that, like yeah. you know like it was it was kind of amy winehouse's death that 
was springboarded Adele into massive mm. mainstream fact, uh, fandom. Also a remarkably talented, uh, technically gifted singer who has a kind of jazzy, poppy flair and like a more old fashioned, like throwbacky kind of vibe. Um, and yeah, you, you know, the ghost of Amy Winehouse kind of haunts this record in at, at numerous points. Uh, and of course, the title track and the kind of central thesis of the record is based on a voice message that was in the Amy documentary that released shortly after she passed away. A little exploitative in places, but a pretty good documentary. And in this documentary, she's talking to producer Salam Raimi, who I would even argue has a similar relationship to Amy as soundtrack does to Lupe, someone who was very much intrinsically tied to the rise of Amy Winehouse and the Amy Winehouse sound. A lot of people look at Back in Black, which was produced by Mark Ronson as like the definitive Amy album, but that kind of pop jazz sound that Amy was doing was, you know, very much Salam Raimi, and again, very lush, very jazzy kind of strings and things like that, which you see in the soundtrack on, on, on Lupe's uh, beat selections uh, across his discography. Mm -hmm. um, you have the, the quote yeah. written down, right? Yeah. Um, so, and, and this is also the hook of the title track, which is the first track on the album so she says to um salam she says to salam i keep coming out with battle raps they're just pouring out of me like wu-tang stuff but really neat very beautiful alliterated battle raps so next time you want to come for me and have a battle rap off i'm gonna kill you because i'm a samurai and so. yeah this this amy the samurai that's, kind that's of character um you know comes through on on the record and that seems to be the central thesis of, of where lupe was working from in the creation of this record correct me if i'm wrong but basically this started with just samurai i guess and then lupe expanded it to become an album that was basically like what if amy became a battle rapper uh, that seems to be the premise and and we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later in the sense that like i i mean i guess i guess i get into it now um i like thematic lupe I, I like when lupe picks like a theme or a thesis but i generally prefer it when it's something that's kind of very loose you know the the akira tetsuo association on tetsuo and youth like the album's not about tetsuo from akira but at the same time he's like a character that kind of you know like appears in the background of the record and kind of occasionally pulls things into focus whereas like uh you know on the coolest second album i, I didn't much care for like oh this character is the streets and this represents like the street element and this is the cool and this is the i, I can't remember which which individual characters make up the the record yeah. i don't um, think that lupe is necessarily very good at following a clear cohesive through line in concepts yes. like a like a creative writer mc like open mic eagle would. sure so, sure exactly like i i for all of when i first saw the the tweet of, about like the album relating to amy winehouse being a samurai i i kind of laughed and thought that was ridiculous <laughs> because I, I one i wasn't aware of the quote and the quote is actually really dope and two lupe uh, is pretty weeby oh he's yeah, pretty absolutely. weebish yeah. when it comes to that type of stuff yeah. so when i first saw the like, cover and i was everything. like yeah. i was like this fool is like, fucking wild i was like it's about to be and, like some yeah some samurai and, shit but, and while yeah. While it's like it's it's like good or whatever, I also was having a hard time finding the uh, outside of the the chorus and yeah. a couple like bars or a few um, allusions to, and references to, here to like a, a woman or and things happening. I didn't see the through line for that that being the yeah. fulcrum mm -hmm. of of the the concept of the album at all. Mm -hmm. But so you actually, know, it's musically dope. But I just don't get the samurai i am or i who that ninja I think, amy I think winehouse shit. yeah more more no. broadly like just a portion the, of the inspiration the, uh, or the, the, so the sorry like the the figure of the you know the archetype of the lone ronin or whatever you know mm -hmm. someone who's who's greatly skilled but can never quite fit in directly with the society they take yeah. part in walks away into the sunset in the end in search of stronger opponents like i think lupe probably sees like himself in that and he probably okay. sees absolutely. amy <laughs> I mean, he absolutely, yeah, absolutely sees himself in that i mean look at the cover yeah. there's plenty yeah. of pictures of videos of lupe in a kimono yeah. swinging a katana around on the internet so, i know he's like a black belt in several martial arts and the like um but you know there's there's a um yeah. you know obviously that's something that's very appealing yeah. to lupe and i can see that when he saw this amy winehouse quote for all the reasons i've already discussed yeah. that lupe would be immediately sure. drawn to amy the samurai it's as. also just really dope to hear from like a like singer songwriter that is <laughs> of amy's cat like caliber saying something like that it's like yeah, yeah that's fucking fire yeah. actually and i support i support that fully but yeah in terms of the concept of the album i i just uh i i felt like 
I, I kind of felt like this was just like a really good rap album. Yes. I, of course, I think that's one of the, the good things or one of the dope things about um, Lupe is that uh, you can dive into his music and try to pull out all the double and triple entendres and put together the rhyme schemes and try to find deeper meaning in the lyrics from your perspective or try to uncover the puzzles that Lupe seems or, you know, uh, the the breadcrumbs that he's leading towards yes. certain ideas and that's fun but ultimately one thing that's really good about the the last two um this project and drill music and zion from lupe is that there seems to be like a more return to a conventional type of hip-hop sound that is just like this is good hip-hop music that i'm doing these elaborate like poetic device tricks but at the same time you could just turn this on and it meets every single criteria of good sounding rap music the production is so jazzy and fluid and and upbeat and and just lovely to listen to even if it was somebody who wasn't as talented as lupe over them and it's a it's a fun breezy album but yeah uh, I, yeah i think sorry no go, go, i keep cutting no, you off because yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, I, I like we're going past the part like uh I yeah, yeah. to mention Sorry, please. Okay. You you guys were saying that you guys didn't feel that there was a full connection between Amy and the album, right? You felt no. that it was not super. Clear. I didn't yeah. catch it. Is so, what I'm saying. I don't know if there two is. I just the lost track. I would say yeah. so, yeah. but yeah, the, I didn't catch it. Maybe I'm not but listening well. I partially think that was intentional. That it was kind of mm. vague and a little unclear. And he said also in an interview that he wanted it to be more about anybody. Sure. Even though he specifically said Amy, but he said it could be about anybody, and specifically it's supposed to be about an artist and dealing with the the entertainment industry as a whole. Uh, yes, um, makes sense. and I think Amy is absolutely like a brilliant kind of example or, or an avatar of you right, know yeah. what the entertainment industry and and capital in music can do to a yeah. talented young artist. Um, because you know this was somebody who obviously like needed help and, yeah. and unfortunately didn't receive enough of it mm -hmm. um, but yeah like mega says like lupe's fundamentals are just so good that the album functions remarkably well as just great raps <laughs> he's he's rapping his ass off in every track soundtracks beat kind of selection yeah. like his oeuvre yeah, is, is really wonderful very good everything well. sounds really good honestly i i find the sound of the album to be a little I don't want to say stock, but like a bit out of the box. It's a bit too clean for me. Mm. I would have it sounds liked like his most conventional album. Yeah, something a little dustier or something a bit more interesting being done with the sound with the sampling would have would have been cool for me. Do you think it was intentional to do that? Oh yeah, Lupe is setting out to make. You know, if El Spade was here, I think you know El Spade is someone who is very intent on like there is a right way to make music. Uh, you know, these sort of sonic parameters need to be met in order to make good music. And Lupe might be the best in the world at that specific thing. Um, you know, whether that's like his ability to to put rhymes together and make them sound really dope and just how beautifully mixed and mastered and all the different layers, everything sits in the right place on the mix. Um, you know, if, if we were trying to approach hip hop uh, from an objective perspective as opposed to like a, a dialectical one but like uh, from objective from a sonic point of view or in which we're like he's taking all of the good. ethics and all of the rules from golden era hip hop and advancing them sonically sonically from, yeah. from the writing to the production approach it still maintains a uh, a, a, a sample based type of vibe to it and it's basically like what hip hop should sound like if we just take all the ethics of the of the 90s and mm. turn it into something now which yes. i find absolutely like uh, it's hard to disagree with that there's there's a quality to to lupe's music that is just like i tend to like the more weird shit everybody that yes. listens to us knows that and with this album when i was saying it seems like the most conventional is because when you listen to drill music in zion that was a project that was created with the intention of immediacy right yes. like so put all a couple of this of days together yeah. and then and you go back to the last few albums those are high art concept like drogas wave drogas light fucking tetsuo those are nine minute songs of yes. deep things this one takes it back not even to the cool because then he's trying to kind of find a space in this mainstream yes. that is no longer having the same like aesthetic qualities of, of the 90s in terms of ethics and things like he's doing songs with you know 
towards my point, this album feels like the most conventional that I've ever heard Lupe. And one of the things for me is even though there's a deep concept and intention there, like it just doesn't, I don't get that from the music as much as I get it just being good rap music. When I listen, like, you know, I'm not a bar whisperer, like in any special way that I pick up things, but most of the lyrics on this, like you're saying, like anybody can be the samurai. They're your basic conventional Lupe dope battle rapper type oh, of yeah, bar. Absolutely. And you know, I've seen him critique that in the past. Like he doesn't like just recently when he was giving praise to Aesop and Soul, he was saying like battle rappers are doing the same thing and he likes to do something different. But on this, I feel like it's pretty much conventional, just fucking like barring out rapping. And you have these bars that are like, okay, that's like I get that. Walk it how you talk it, never false it like Farah. Farah false. Yeah. It, you know yeah, like awesome, yeah. to me that's just like okay like you're rapping to rap here like yeah. you're you're doing a good rap but then you also have lines where he's like um what it was the, what is the one crash at a friend's flat for a week felt at home as a raft on a beach and there are these kind of deep insightful things that is not just rapping to rap and and that's one of the dope things about lupe you get the lines where um for everyone stereo feel like steroids to carry heavy shit to pick up but you could barely lift it now you larry wills like larry wills the fucking bodybuilder mm -hmm. Picking yep. up steroids yeah. and, and just like moving. He's really dope at that. And sometimes I feel like it gets a bit pretentious in, <laughs> in the way that like there's this whole conversation, not necessarily with what Lupe intends, but from a fan base perspective where they make it seem like this is like maybe more complex or deep than it should be just like I like the doubles and the triple entendres. But yeah. man, I, I, I don't know if I'm ever catching the right things and i don't think it's necessary i like this album a lot and i'm 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 not a lupe fan so to speak like right, I've, right. I've enjoyed his music for a long time i think he's great and i wouldn't argue about anybody saying that he's on the level of the greatest rappers of all time but it just doesn't necessarily speak to me and this album is particularly regular to me it's it's, it's a particularly regular to me like there's nothing too interesting about this other than a few bars i, I would and say vibe. for better and for worse like this is a deeply curated experience like this is you know we live out here in tokyo uh and you can go into like a sushi place in ginza and someone will like take you to your table and you'll sit down in like an extremely comfortable seat what is it called when they don't give you like you get what the chef gives you? Omakase, yeah, like yes, yeah. yeah. so you get like your omakase. You get your set. You get what the chef is giving yeah. you. It will be incredible. It will be masterfully crafted. Um, it will be visually and just, you know to your palate beautiful food. Yeah. Um, but like There's yeah, no I mean, there, on like, Secret House, like you know, we we like our greasy spoon diners as well, yeah, right? You know, we like our, our little hidden places uh, that you know are. Yeah. Under a bar that like a guy opens when he wakes yeah. up and closes when he feels like going to sleep. Yeah. For, for 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 me, oh, go ahead, Des. No, no, I was gonna. It's interesting you use that for like the secret house metaphor. Mm. Yeah, I yeah. think I think it's. We all know Lupe is not always gonna be that uh, guy under the bar that sells a like, greasy ramen that's super yeah. fucking dope. But uh, I think it's important to come out of like, oh, this is Lupe. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's it's an yeah. extremely curated experience, like. Like you, you, you don't get like this fine dining as precise as as it on almost anybody else's type Especially of work. Like a black know? thought, you know, black thought even, danger mouse joint, yeah, like kind of. Yeah, but even yeah. then, I think the production was a little bit weirder and a bit yeah. more off kilter on that one. Yeah, I mean, it's because danger mouse does kind of lean into pockets of irregularity. Like this is very just jazzy type of. I don't, I don't know. I like, I just don't see the intangible aspect of it. Mm. The I don't want to say the lyrics aren't great because they absolutely are and. And I'm getting a lot out of them and it's a pleasure to listen to. It's just there's there's something about it that just doesn't speak to my personal sensibilities. But I also think that this is just like clearly like the like the Rhapsody album. Yes. Clearly one of the best projects of the year. I have no problem if somebody was like, This is my favorite album of the year, I'm like, go ahead, you know, rap man Gavin. Like I you enjoy enjoy your your shit. But for me, like even the Eminem album is slightly more interesting to me. Um it, it, even though they're doing completely different things. But that's because on that Eminem album there is also like a social critique that I think is something that elevates it for me in a way that makes me think about the art this i'm trying to find the breadcrumbs of something i'm not even as sh real, sure is really there other than like 
really gro- really dope double entendres about rapping well. Yeah. I think it's just a concept album, uh, to be honest. You just, just decided to make it a concept album, and he's like, let me just run with it. So I, I, I do also yeah. think... I like, think that was secondary. I think he made some, some Lupe shit and was like, you know what? Like I'm going to tie it to, to that. I'm, I'm projecting absolutely completely, but <laughs> I don't get the... The, con, I, I, the concept just doesn't come across to me much. People in the comments point out all the lady bars on the first two, but like, cake... Yeah. He's flowing. I love that track. But what does that have to do with a samurai or Amy Winehouse or the other? I don't know. It's like, yeah, this. I'm good at rapping. I'm good at doing things, but this might be the best one. I, dope. I get that. That's a rap song. That I don't know where the concept is at on that. It doesn't. I like. Is the concept deeper than I'm a dope artist? Uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I, mean yeah, I, I, yeah, you I could also know. do the I'm yeah. a dope artist like Amy. You know, he says Janet jo- Janis Joplin. He, he makes the comparison there. It was also a big influence on, on Amy. You know, Janis Joplin droplets. Sounds like the apocalypse. Yeah. Like, you know, this is like a bit of it in there. Uh, it, work, till, till eternity, you got the uh, the beehive surviving a, a, a cataclysm or something like that you know the beehive amy's hair like you know it, it shows up but i do think there's a reason that the front cover is a, a kind of ukiyo-e style illustration of, of lupe fiasco as yeah. a samurai mm, as opposed sure. to amy winehouse as a samurai yeah um because that's what that's what i'm getting at well, sure yeah also the idea of samurai is someone who is supposed to serve right you know they, yeah. they serve a master or something and i think that kind of comes across in the sense that he's serving his fans some um some of what they need or some of, the, sure. some of what they want you know he yeah. has like this uh, duty to give them what they want and as, yeah. as you guys were saying before what his fans really want is that lupe that will do the double triples yeah that progression from the 90s but in a current lens or something like that sure I think uh, that's- one thing i will give to lupe over say the the rhapsody or the eminem that just came out i have not listened to the new eminem sure. so i could be wrong on this but it is an hour and 10 minutes long so i sure. think i'm i think i'm probably correct oh, yeah. on this is that this is like a the lows on extremely that, like precise there's not a bad moment on no, this record absolutely not. the whole thing sounds excellent it's 31 minutes long could have been 10 minutes longer and i'd still feel the same about it it is a a precise effort it's not overstuffed like the rhapsody or or the last kendrick or, or presumably this eminem if his you last can cut 30 minutes been... out of that eminem and it might make it just a little better yeah um, <laughs> but not by much yeah yeah yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, I mean, we haven't gotten too specifically into the individual songs on the record. Yeah. This is definitely a more broad discussion of Lupe and, yeah. and his place in, in music at the moment. Um, and, you know, I, I do think that, like, if you're a fan of his work, you enjoy great rapping over great beats. Um, this is a, a wonderful record. It's, oh, yeah. it's truly, you know, yeah. like a master at his prime doing his stuff he hasn't lost a single step in the 20 years he's been in the industry i think he's found a sweet spot with time like same with the drill music and zan it's just the right amount of time he just knows where to cut so i want to be i want to be clear that um i absolutely do not like the m&m album more than this. <laughs> i'm just saying like there there's just like an element of inspection that i find a little bit more interesting when i try to figure out what the concept is like diving into lyrics is fun and interesting but yeah yeah it's a yeah. different type of puzzle for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, one's, we, a, one's a word search and one is a crossword puzzle type of thing, you know. Eminem's like, all right, oh, I, here's Circle Ouroboros and here's Circle Chorus. With with Lupe, it's like, what what is a th- idea that fits into this many spaces that yeah. crosses with this other idea? Yeah, it's it's great. Sure. Yeah. When you said that, you know, the uniqueness kind of had it went out for you, I, I just, I couldn't agree because, you know, sometimes uniqueness is not enough to, you know, Oh yeah. Pass over, I guess, the idea of like enjoyability, enjoyability and replayability. Yeah. You know, people can make unique albums that just, you know. Oh, I know. Don't feel like they go yeah. anywhere. I mean, I listen to a lot of weird shit that's pretty whack. I listen to a lot of weird shit that's pretty whack. Uh, yeah, yeah. By a lot well, of standards. Well, I mean, yeah. but again, you know, yeah. this is also, you know, you have to even remove the album from or put it into the context of this review, yeah. in the sense that like, secret, like Lupe raps rings around. I want to say everyone we've ever reviewed, maybe, like in terms of sheer rapping ability, you know, in terms of like the ability to make a fucking dope triple entendre or anything like that. Clearly, you know, Lupe is a better MC than Sleep Sinatra or, or, or um, 
you know, uh, Nakama or, or somebody else, you know, that we love a lot. Um, but, you know, it's not necessarily what people who watch this channel mm. come to us sure. for. Um, ultimately, right. you know, the, the music that, that we enjoy and the music that we try and take a deeper lens on yeah. bears like a more kind of um, abstract reading yeah. or like a, a reading from a, like a, through a dialectical yeah. lens that this album, like y maybe you're better off going to Professor Sky for. Yeah. Well, you know, this is this album is a good reason why we don't call our things album reviews. We yeah. we don't get in, as much into it as like the mechanics or bar whispering or like the descriptive nature of being like there's a flowery jazz piano that comes in on you know and then the drums are it's a hi-hat heavy we don't we don't really do that we we like to talk about the artists and 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 what what we feel about the them um within the culture and history and time and space of what it also politically means and, and things of that nature so this is like I, I don't know like when when it comes to lupe uh, even when it comes to describing like him rapping better there's kind of like a uh, something that's towards objectivity that needs to be met for that criteria to mean anything you yeah. know there's a he has a different level he, he's he's more accessible than an aesop rock but he's denser than a rhapsody but he's not necessarily is like socially poignant as a kendrick lamar or and he doesn't have that matter, and he doesn't yeah. even have like the diary self-confessional seriousness of a j cole all of these people could be considered like super incredible at doing it but if you max out the stats for like double entendres his character build is that if you max out the stats on mike for yeah. example you know big mike uh, it's he's maxed out for like assonance in yes. soul whereas you know with lupe fiasco like i just there's something about his music that really connects with, to me, but there's also something about it that prevents me from going back to listen to it in the same way I think a lot of his fan base does. Mm. And um, that's what's interesting about him as an artist. Like, yeah, yeah. I don't think that we need to like everything that's good. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't think that I need to love every A24 art house film or, or you know, everybody that comes out with it. But I just find yeah. that Lupe is is like, he's in such a space to me that I think it's pretty interesting and I would like to see him kind of go down the rabbit hole a little bit more because when I heard him talking about battle rappers not doing anything different I think like okay well what are you going to do different yeah. and this is being the most conventional lupe that i've heard in such a long time i was just a little curious about like where can you go yeah. where are you going like i know this is a single project in an entire it's, canon of music but it yeah. started to work on in like 2019 as well oh that, really yeah, yeah it's old it's, oh really yeah. i didn't know that but yeah, i appreciate uh, i don't want it to come across as though like i think this album is whack or or uh, i did definitely say that uh, it might be a little bit like less of but I, again, I didn't hear Lupe say that this is the intention of the album. I'm only no. going off of what a few tweets and people have told me. I, I just don't see it in the same like particular light as that on my listens. And I yeah. was trying to listen to, to it. Seek it out. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, in fact, I was listening to it so acute, like so closely that I didn't even make notes as I was. I was like, wow, that's an interesting. I was reading along with it. And usually I make a lot of notes about a lot of lyrics but with lupe it's like you can't stop for a second or you're gonna miss something and it's really fun for that type of uh puzzle it makes it yeah it's a great puzzle to solve for sure uh and also a great passive listen as well like you yeah. know it's absolutely that's what's a yeah, like yeah, amazing yeah. about it mm -hmm. like the 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 line that he straddles of being super super dense but also just like lovely and vibrant it's not something that even like a black thought really accomplishes as mm -hmm. well or um it, name any other like the highest tier mcs like even who he yeah. thinks like soul doesn't do that the soul doesn't do that at, at all pretty Aesop much rock. or aesop rock yeah. it's Ace like, sometimes does it Ace, yeah. Ace is cool but it's also a very like it, it is a very particular look vibe he's yeah. also you know got I like mean? a like, voice that yeah. like kind of can obstruct your sure. passive yeah, enjoyment yeah, exactly. if you're not very, like a yeah if you uh, don't care yeah. for like a lot of guitar stems you you might miss out on some asap rock he's Whereas wonky he's lupe wonky even weird. spends a lot of this record like singing uh mm -hmm. and i've i've never been a huge fan of lupe's so singer but he's it's, like it's so, so catchy so catchy. like on cake yeah. and, and, yeah. and yeah. yeah it's extremely it's catchy funny, this album people online do not really like the hook on cake but yeah i i enjoy it quite a bit 
the hooks on this shit were deceptive. The like they were like te- like they are very good hooks. Mm, like yeah. even even if I'm just like oh, I don't really oh shit I'm just yeah, like you yeah. know like yeah, the, the samurai yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. Samurai. Oh yeah, yeah. Already, it's cool. fucking great. I I don't mind his. I think his singing voice is actually great. He doesn't yeah. just like. Yeah, it also makes me. It's not so good that it makes me feel like I can. It's like something you want to rap alongside with him, and you can't just rap alongside his lyrics unless you really study. Sure. But the yeah, courses yeah. bring you right back in. Yeah. Lupe is amazing, bro. This album is yeah. amazing. Um, what do we want to do? We want to go off on specific let, let, songs? Let me tell a, a little anecdote real quick. Uh, oh, you want to go into some specific tracks? I mean, no, no, I, 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 I don't, don't have any. No, we, we've like we've been talking for like half an hour about Lupe, and and I think more broadly, like. Yeah, I mean, it's it's very clear that this is a, a wonderful record and we'd just be repeating ourselves. Um, I, I did want to tell a quick anecdote about Amy, or possibly Amy, and, and, and a connection I had to this album. Um, when I was like nine, ten years old, uh, I befriended uh, my friend Ollie, who was, who was a year older than me, uh, on the bus going towards the Brit School, which is a, a big performing arts school in South London uh, that... Uh, countless famous artists have come from. Amy came from the Brit, Brit School, Adele came from the Brit School, Black Midi came from the Brit School. Like, you know, it's the biggest performing arts school in the UK. And every year they do like performances of their like biggest, you know, most talented kind of uh, upcoming young musicians. Uh, and they invite all the other like public schools that are local uh, to come watch these performances. And I saw a jazz singer who was maybe seven, eight years older than I would have been at the time, named Amy, who performed. And she had black hair, and she was of some kind of Jewish or Italian descent. And shortly after, there was like a pretty generic rock band who did a song whose chorus has been stuck in my head for 20 years at this point. Um, And I think it was her, but I'm not 100% sure it was her. And that ghost of Amy Winehouse... I kind of feel on this record too. I think it's her, but I couldn't place exactly where it is other than a couple of bars here and there and a few little illusions here and there where I'm like, oh, that's Amy. And then sometimes it's just some dope shit about making in the industry. And I'm like, is that Amy? You catch the ghost a little bit. Aimless Winehouse. Hey. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, no. Um, Yeah, that's dope. I I like that anecdote, especially because she is a ghost, you know? We shouldn't be able to see her completely throughout the whole thing. You know? and, and I think that's also true for her career as well. Even though she was like a very public figure and someone who was very widely disparaged by the British media, you know, just crucifying this 22-year-old woman uh, for, for a very obvious drinking problem. And even this quote that we have um, with, Lu- uh, with Amy as the samurai with her very neat, beautifully alliterated battle raps um, comes from a very drunk Amy. Like, I, I think after that, she's like, oh, you, you think I'm fucked up? Yeah, I'm fucking fucked up mate like tight um you know she was obviously like going through it but like you know where where the real amy begins and and the kind of um the broader illusion of you know the glamorous but not glamorous jazz singer who who came from the uk and died young as as a romantic figure comes in you know it's it's i think it's something that's that's kind of interesting and maybe that elusiveness works in in this album's favor the song that's playing right now is called Mumble Rap. And when yes. I saw the title, I got scared. <laughs> me, I was me like, too. oh, no. Me too. Me too. I was like, oh, he's going like, to do, do the, the thing. The Eminem thing. You know, I was worried for a sec, you know. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. I thought it was going to be critiquing Mumble Rappers. And yes. I was like, oh, that's I'm, always a fun thing I'm to like, do. like, yeah, please don't do that. Uh, uh, Public, Public Enemy did yeah. that on one of their more recent albums as well. Chuck yeah. D's like, you need to open your mouth and speak louder. And I'm like, okay, uh, man. <laughs> thanks. Thanks, yeah. Chuck. <laughs> yeah. Lupe, rap ruining Lu- the game. Like Lupe's kinda. Lupe's weebish, but he's he's not he's not that corny. <laughs> yeah, he's, <laughs> he's super weebish. The song specifically, mm. the there was a bars at the beginning where he's like the definition of possess a, possession, the state of being completely under the influence of an idea or emotion, broken open to let the ghosts in and go gagosian with extra low end. That shit is yeah. crazy. Yeah, just, yeah. Reading yeah. along, beautiful boss Smith. Well, what I love Amazing. about Lupe's level of like fame is that people actually hit the fucking rap genius to finally <laughs> yeah, put to down explain the actual yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like, but, you know true. listening to somebody else is like yo what did he what did he say and yeah. then it's like you go and it's like all right that nobody wrote down any lyrics for this album and, and every now Lupe, and then so like fun to read along with it. quote 
a, a lyric or something from a record we'll review on the yeah. channel and then the artist will be DM us and be like, yeah, yeah. I didn't say that. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Castro. He was like, nah, I didn't say, I didn't say boot camp. I said who kid. And I was like, how did I hear a fucking boot camp? <laughs> oh, shout out to Castro. It's so shrapnel kid. season, you know? But um, yeah, man. Um, I don't know. I don't really have much more to say about the album. I, I, I know we had a discussion about like the Orientalism and the weebishness, but that's neither here or there. Maybe that's another Speaking discussion that, for uh, uh, another time. Speaking of weebish, the song Number One Headband. Afro Samurai. Yeah, Afro Samurai. Yeah, this is a reference to the Afro Samurai anime. The idea that number one, the number one headband wearer couldn't yep. be challenged by anyone except for number two. Yep. But number two could be challenged by everyone. Yeah. So I was kind of playing yeah. into that and playing into the samurai. Probably but also, this song's samurai. incredible. This song's yeah, so yeah. good. Only one, the only one of the few samurai, actual samurai references on the album, I think. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I, there's some of the last track as well about carrying though. knives and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it pops up. Yeah. It definitely pops up. Yeah. No, it's great. Uh, favorite tracks on the album? Um, oh, till eternity. I just want to quit, commit crimes in Tibet, turn and say something divine, and then climb in a jet. You know, hey. <laughs> so yeah. T- till eternity was one of my favorite songs. Um, also, Samurai. Uh, yeah, me too. Palaces, Samurai. palaces. Wow. Yeah. The hook Ooh, on palaces great. was amazing. You know, we've been talented all along. We think we're fortresses made of stone, but we're just, just palaces. palaces made of flesh and bone, waiting for our time to shine and come on home. Is that the like, one where he gets into like the horticulture line about plant? Like he's bomb. I I, I don't know if it is. Yeah. Like I was just reading along, but my favorites yeah. are are palaces, cake, and and um, in samurai. Yeah. Yeah, palaces, uh, like, especially the beat switch on palaces near the end. I was like, oh shit, I'm a sucker for beat switches. So, yeah, when I heard yeah, that, I'm I was like, a, I'm nice. a real hoe for a beat switch too. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm gonna go with Samurai Cake and Outside is definitely my second favorite song called Outside that came out this year. Oh, okay. <laughs> what's the first they one? They said they was outside, but Fucking they not. not. Oh, that one. Oh, okay. uh, <laughs> Every time you start that line, I think you're about to quote Nomad or something. <laughs> nah, bro, wavy bagels, wavy drive bagels. By. A car full. I love that joint. Yeah, listen to that. Like, I'm sure there's some Lupe fans that will end up finding this review. Um, if if you can take anything uh, from this channel, perhaps perhaps you're angrily typing in the comments because we we weren't completely positive on Lupe as as a person hey, or whatever. That's probably but not like, true. I feel like um, like if, if Mega was hating, if it, Mega was hating because Mega's a hater. <laughs> yeah. But like, if yeah. you um you know if you take anything away from this, listen to that wavy bagels and drive by a car full. Trust me, I'm the biggest hater. Meg is the biggest hater. I don't think you guys have to worry about it this time, though. I feel like Lupe fans have a little bit more right. reading and listening comprehension. So I've learned so. not but to care yeah, about don't care about fandom. comments. Yeah, or yeah. fandom. Like, yeah. Did you guys like Bigfoot? Yes, I liked every I song. Liked on the this whole album. album. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I liked every song too. But I thought it was a really fun yeah. listen. Yeah, all the way through. Creation step up. Yeah. The the um. How you feel about the patois? Well, again, like, uh, you know, in my attempts to draw lines to Amy Winehouse, like the you don't know, like, obviously, you know, London, Patois, yeah. don't know the don't know is like yeah, yeah, the type yeah. thing. I was like, yeah, yeah, there's a bit of London in there. You know, Lupe throws in like a few little bits of Britishness flair into into his music every now and then. Uh, on first lesson, before I knew about the, the, the Amy kind of connection i was surprised on the title track where he's like lit a fag took a drag went to sleep i was like americans don't say that yeah um but yeah obviously yeah, yeah. this is a bit of that yeah. he also you know in his uh his japanese cartoon project which was like a like a rock group which i, I don't know if it has other members or if it's just him, is that the one where he has a dinosaur song i uh, probably like, I, I, oh that one, no that, that one was with kaylin ellis yeah, okay. yeah no that was a double collaboration ep with kaylin he, he puts yeah, on yeah. a british affect on 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 those tracks and it's quite funny him and Aesop should make a children's album, dude. <laughs> <Mom and laughs> like, Larry, so the dinosaur dinosaur shit. like a children's yeah. book, but an album instead. Well, I mean, just like like songs for children about dope things like bridges and birds and dinosaurs, dinosaurs yeah. and yeah, just that. being great. Yeah, that's what that's a dream project of, of mine. Like, I would love to hear. I like a- I, I like Lupe when he gets a little bit fucking weird. weird. I wish it, yeah. I wish that he would spread his wings and move away from his you know his typical production sometimes. And I wish that he would just, rock with more artists. But I think that's yeah. a part of his art now. Like he just doesn't yeah. he doesn't collab anymore, right? Yeah. No, that that no, Aesop that Rock collaboration smart. was something that was kind of like an outlier, like an unusual, right? Probably a, a dream collab type yeah. thing for him. It's just like, yeah, yeah. I want to go ball with Ace. Huge like, fan. I think he said fan. his favorite rapper was Aesop Rock, and I'm like. Yeah, I, 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 I've been agree. I agree with that. I would have agreed with that 25 years ago. I've been rocking with Aesop since '99, and and uh, yeah, I, I think he's like a Lupe, like one of the best to ever do it. Amazing. 
So I yeah. guess also he's just doing the professor stuff now too. So is that right. what he's doing? I think so. He's really professor he's, okay. at Harvard, right? Or something. He's been doing Harvard? lectures or MIT? something. Know, some shit like so that, like a very high like Ivy League university. Yeah. Or is like it really? He's teaching like rap theory and stuff. Oh, okay, so he's doing, doing some I'm stuff. I'm sure that right. keeps him mostly busy and just sure. recording whatever he can. But I don't yeah. know. Like you said at the beginning, Jed, it just seems like someone who's just in their prime, just doing what they, having, what having they fun with it, do, doing yeah. what he does well, doing it yeah. remarkably That's well. That's what I like about this. He's making art for himself, and I appreciate that. Yeah. Patreon's on screen right now. Uh, thank you to everybody who rocks with us. Shouts out to the Sonic Cloth. Shouts out to Carl Chops Press, No Name Book Club, Extraordinary Rap Podcast, Rap Music Plug Podcast, and everybody else who's been rocking with us as of late. Um, yeah, Secret House, you know, like, comment, subscribe if you want to or, or not. We don't really care about that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, SH. Uh, very neat, very beautifully alliterated battle raps for you. Thanks for having me, guys, and uh, thanks for listening, everyone. They say they're outside, but they're not. I'm gay. Oh, ah. Oh, it's just so fucking good.